some other football news, and this actually dropped today. And this, of course, you know, is not confirmed. This is all speculation, but this is big news revolving around the recruiting cycle. Uh, we got we're looking at the 2026 class, and things are getting interesting there. Uh, how about this? So Faison Brandon, uh, five-star quarterback of the 2026 class. Uh, he got the crystal ball from Steve Wiltfong to become the next great quarterback at the University of Tennessee. You guys think he might uh, be interested in hopping on with the Vols? Um, yeah, uh, I think I think uh, um, he's probably the the next uh, great quarterback. I mean, we do have Mark Langer. Um, uh, but we have Mark Langer here now, and then, of course, who else? Um, we have McIntyre. But, I mean, you never know. You, you always have to keep on getting good quarterback, um, you know, uh, quarterbacks in and keep on cycling them in. Because, one, you want the competition. But, two, even if one of them transfers out, you still want to have, you know, uh, in case, you know, one of the other schools like, you know, say Ohio State or someone wants to make a big offer, you want to make sure you have, someone to take over in case of like a emergency. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And as I saw Ohio state and Oregon are the two other teams that are really targeting this kid. So we better, we best be on watch. Yeah. I would probably be more worried about Oregon. Cause I, I just feel, I mean, Ohio state is good too, but I feel like Oregon, I feel like Dan Lanning has always been good at, you know, coming in late and landing, you know, recruits. So that that would be the one that would worry me the most. But right. If, well, yeah. And another thing about that is Ryan Day and uh, you know, both of those coaches that you just mentioned, they are in a way quarterback gurus. So they're a lot like Josh Heupel in the sense that they've been able to create elite offenses with elite talent. You know, it's just a matter of getting a guy like this to come to Tennessee. There's got to be some type of incentive that's above. Ohio State or Oregon, what they can offer. Yeah. Now the the thing with uh, um, uh, especially with this offense, you we've all seen what we can do when we have an actual competent quarterback that can actually consistently hit the ball and receivers that can consistently catch the ball. I'm looking Fast. at you, Ramel Keaton. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, well, he ain't on the team anymore, so that's good. Yeah. Right. I I hate to call him out like that, but he made me want to pull out my hair. But yeah. I don't know what happened. I, I don't know. He was playing. He played so well, especially in the 2022 season. You would have thought that after the Clemson game, after the big game he had against Clemson, he would take that and go forward into the 2023 season and be probably the best receiver on our team. But mm-hmm. no, he. <laughs> I, I don't know. It seems like. When he changed his jersey number, he just changed as a player as a whole. Right. Like, yeah. Something <laughs> happened in between the 2022 uh, off or the uh, the 2022 season and the 2023 off season. Like I don't know if he got surgery, and replaced his hands with cinder blocks, but whatever the deal was, something something changed in between that. Well, yeah. also I've no, I'm I noticed something with Keaton. So he would have one good year, and then he'd have a bad year. He'd have a good year, then he'd have a bad year have a good year and then you'd have a bad year like he just kept on cycling back and mm-hmm. forth between good and bad years and it's like well are you eventually gonna you know consistently put it together because oh. i feel like i feel like had he actually put up like an actual good season he would actually probably be you know probably have been picked in the draft right well you, you know nfl I'm- scouts look at plays like that where you know it in in the sake of Joe Milton, I, we love to get on Joe Milton about you know the inaccuracy that he has, but when he makes that golden throw, Ramel Keaton is always there to drop it. That's the issue that I've got with that. But yeah, as you said, he's no longer uh, on the team. And by the point where we get this, uh, you know, this twenty twenty six quarterback, if he joins the team, we'll have a whole another group of wide receivers. Uh, yeah. So. This is a clip that I saw earlier today of what he can do. And it isn't much, but it it does give you a little bit of an idea of what to expect. So he's the he's the number one ranked recruit uh, 
Um, if I remember correctly, I think according to 247 Sports, I think he's, what, the number one recruit, the number one QB, and the number one player out of North Carolina. I mean, look at that form. That's that's an elite form right yep. there. Looks NFL caliber to me. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's also tall, too. Of course, you know, Hypo wants the tall QBs. Yeah, we're about – if we get him, we're going to be so spoiled with QBs. We're going to have uh, – Oh, George McIntyre, Merklinger, and this guy? Yeah, you're looking at an extremely elite class right there. But you're also looking at potential opportunities for another school to try and sneak in and steal one of them. I mean, if if, if we if, if, if in, even if another school comes in and steals one of them, I imagine it still wouldn't be the end of the world for us because we have so many good quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. So, you know, what I'm looking for in him, of course, you know, he's got all the credentials that you could look for in a quarterback. So, uh, you know, seeing as that, and if he does come to Tennessee, then, yeah, we got ourselves a really good one. And the same goes for Oregon if Ohio State if they somehow flip him because uh, all Ohio State needs is another great quarterback to go along with their team. Um, yeah, you know. and also this has nothing to do with Tennessee, but I saw Alabama, I think they have – um a prediction to flip a four-star QB that I think is committed to SMU. So, uh, Keelan Russell, I think was his name, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Alabama's going to, uh, I'm not going to disparage SMU, but I just. Yeah, Anthony, I, 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 I agree with that. If he actually comes to Tennessee, I would imagine one of them's going to transfer out. Not Nico, of course. He's going to be the starter. Yeah. Uh, it, it'll probably be uh, it'll probably it'll, be Merklinger. Yeah, I would imagine Merklinger. Because <laughs> uh, you know, by that point, twenty twenty six. Let's see. Yeah, he what's he in his sophomore year now, or is this his freshman? Is he? This he's is his. Freshman, yeah, right? yeah, he's a true freshman. This yeah, is that's right. Okay, year. thought so. So he'd be a he'd be a junior by this point in time, which likely means that if he because he probably won't have the starting position at this point in time. Now it's possible. Because if Nico has a phenomenal junior year and, you know, is a top 10 projected pick in the NFL draft, then it's very well possible that he might do what most people are expecting James Pierce to do and go to the NFL draft a year early. And then in, wh in which case, yeah, he'd be the starting quarterback because Nico would be gone and he would be the next to go up. Uh, but, you know, it could if that were to happen, maybe George McIntyre decides to move on. It all depends on, you know, how things go. College football is an ever-changing landscape. You never know how NIL is going to go. Maybe uh, maybe Georgia decides that they haven't ruined enough quarterback careers and they decide, hey, we're going to pay you $15 million to come play for us and sit on the third-string bench. All right, well, ben, now, I'm uh, about uh, here. I, so, I was going to say, know. one school I would look for, like if Mark Linger ever jumped into the portal, um, uh, would be South Carolina. I know that sounds kind of <laughs> random, but the reason I would watch out for South Carolina, his number one target out of high school was Michael Smith, who was a tight end, and he's at South Carolina. So I would think mm -hmm. South Car I think Michael Smith would, of course, get into the staffs here and be like, hey, you know, bring my high school quarterback with me. <laughs> you know, stuff right. like that. I mean, at least that would be one of the uh, schools that I would watch out for. Cause oh, like I said, I don't know how good Michael Smith is. I know he was a top 100 player and one of the top tight ends in the country, but you know, that doesn't really matter once you get to campus, the stars rating practically don't matter when you get to campus, really. Mm -hmm. You have to get down there and work. So I want to be like, you know, if we're looking at this two something years down the road, chances are it might pick up another true freshman, really good quarterback. And by that point, maybe one of these quarterbacks that we have is going to hit the portal. My only hope is that when or if that ever happens, um, that he does not go to a rival school. Because like how stupid would it be to hit the transfer portal and then go somewhere like Florida or Georgia or Alabama or yeah, you know, like. Like that would be, you know, one example I can think of is Gerald Mincy, uh, who hit the transfer portal and went to Kentucky and then started getting on Tennessee about beat, boot, beat, boot, this and that, and this and that. And now he went from 
what I what we thought was a great player for Tennessee, and now everybody's clowning him over on this side. Same thing's happening with Jaden Rashada. This guy mentioned right here, Jaden Rashada going from Florida to Georgia and then fil- filing a lawsuit against uh, good old Billy Napier and the staff down there. So, you know, kind of want to avoid those situations at best. So the Jaden Rashada situation is really weird because at first Florida was the one that offered him $9 million like nine, nine and a half million. And then Miami upped it to like 11 and 11 to 11 and a half million. And then Florida said, fuck it. We don't want you to go to Miami. We're, we're offering you 13 and a half million. <laughs> and then he got to campus and they were like, oh, well, yeah, we're not paying him. Yeah. If Lenora Sellers uh, ends up being really good, like uh, most fans expect, then in yeah. which case I don't really see them trying to, but you know he's a yeah he's a true freshman too right oh so, I mean yeah. uh, Lenore Sellers is what a freshman Richard I think so I mean I was just saying that like um, especially if a lot of people how the well, the way South Carolina fans talk about Sellers so what he would have to sit on the bench maybe for a year but maybe if his uh, you know friend is you know still there a tight end or whatever let's just say it's backloaded or whatever then mm-hmm. i think he would rather you know sit a year behind and get to play with his best friend than maybe just sit on and the bench another year at Tennessee yeah i thought so redshirt freshman all right that's what i thought but I mean, I mean, that's what I was saying is that you know, with you know, uh, sellers, I mean, I think he's definitely got a uh, high uh, ceiling for South Carolina. Sorry, I was just talking to Andrew, but he's what 6'3, 250. He has a hell of an arm and he looked pretty accurate. I mean, that one throw he had, it was against Furman, so it was in garbage time, but I mean, he did look good though. But you know, you have to you have to see it against an actual team now. Yeah. And uh yeah, Anthony's right. Probably won't need Merck with having lagway. Yeah. If he if he does go somewhere, it's gonna be somewhere you know, where somebody's in dire need of a quarterback. You know, it won't be somebody who's just trying to grab as many quarterbacks as possible. That's just complete mismanagement on, on yeah. the roster. I mean maybe you know what that reminds me of this isn't college, but you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, getting 10 million for Kirk Cousins and then uh, you know getting a quarterback in the NFL draft first round. That's what that reminds yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Great idea, I, by the way. Who knows? Maybe Jake Merklinger does what Taven Jackson did and go to goes to Indiana. Oh, I, I was gonna say maybe. Uh, think about this. Maybe he goes to Ole Miss because you know Lane Kiffin would definitely be the type to fucking go. Oh, come over here to try to piss off the Tennessee fans or whatever. And then he'd and then he'd yap about it on Twitter. Yeah, that 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 could be possible. Yeah. And you, so you never know. But yeah, no, glad that we're getting picking up another good quarterback. Hopefully, and of course, that isn't confirmed yet. That's just a crystal ball. Things can change over the course of a night or two. But you know, at least we're on the map. 